So folks, this has been a long time coming. Now it's time to have a stock prediction for Beyond Meat. And before we get to it, as always, I would truly appreciate an early thumbs up since it does help spread the message of this channel. And if you want to keep getting more information regarding Beyond Meat, Tattoo Chef, The Very Good Food Company, or other plant-based stocks, make sure to subscribe and don't forget that bell button. I truly appreciate your help. So first, I thought I would predict the stock price in the coming years, and then after, I would explain why. So first of all, to be able to get a stock price, it is a good idea to get an idea what we could expect from them in revenue. And a couple of days ago, I talked about what kind of revenue we could see by 2030. So I thought we could use that as a metric. And if we take a look at the street, you know, Jim Cramer, the guy who's been talking about that this could be the next Facebook, the next Amazon and Google. Uh, the team over there at the street predict that it could be around five billion dollars now guys if you haven't seen the video on these predictions take a look at it over there and then we have the investor place uh, another analyst company that's been predicting that they actually think this number is kind of conservative they could actually see it doubling to about 10 billion that would be a 25x in revenue from where they're at today and usually i like to do this one percent rule which is that could the company take at least between one to 10% from a market? And if we only go with 1%, Beyond Meat is going after the $1.4 trillion animal agriculture industry. If they got 1% of that, that would be 14 billion in revenue, but that might take longer than nine years, right? So I think we'll go something in between, which would be investor place. And I think it's interesting also to take a look at one of their analysts. The analyst who actually talked about this was Luke Lango. And he was named the world's number one investor at 25. Luke Lango is a futurist marvel whose background in technological innovation and proven method of hypergrowth investing, yield life changing, and 10x stock picks. So it does seem that he has some merit here, right? So I think it could be interesting. So what kind of metrics did I usually use to be able to predict a stock price? Well, as I've talked about many times before, I usually use a PS ratio, right? The price to sales, because it gives you a good indication, especially when it's growth companies. The typically would be PE value, right? But that doesn't make a lot of sense when it's not a valuation company so uh, or a value company, like for instance, Coca-Cola, right? I mean, it's a good company to get solid revenues constantly, but they've existed forever. They're not really flying up in prices. They're not reinvesting, uh, coming out with anything else that is new out there. Not at the moment. So it doesn't make sense to use PE, but price to sales makes more sense when it comes to growth company. And the reason being also that you can compare it with other industries, other growth companies like Tattoo Chef, like uh, the very good food company, Else Nutrition and so on. But I also think it's really interesting to compare it with other companies that are trying to disrupt huge industry on the planet, which would be Tesla, right? So we're going to talk more about that. But first of all, we need to see what kind of shares they have. And right now it's about 63 million outstanding shares. The current stock price is a low 140, $104.97. And the market cap is 6.6 .6 at the moment. All right. So what we need to do is have the pH ratios, right? Right now it's actually around 16, uh, but normally it's trading around 20, 22. So we'll get to there. But to be able then to get a stock price, you need to basically take the outstanding shares uh, and you divide it with the market cap. And what happens then, right? So if we're going after investor place revenue of about 10, billion dollars in 2030 that would mean on a ps ratio of one yeah it's basically that would be 158.7 dollars in nine years from now not very impressive from a growth stock like this that is disrupting the whole planet basically uh and not very likely at all it's just something to compare with so this would basically mean that there would be no hype about the stock at all uh it wouldn't continue to innovate or put money into research and so on and that's what they're all about right so but just to have something it still be uh, basically a, a 50 percent growth in stocks it's not too shabby i guess but still 
Uh, but if we use the number of PS5, being quite conservative, I would say, uh, most companies like we know, really huge disruptive companies. Let's take uh, Tattoo Chef is around 10. Tesla is usually, right now it's also around 16, but usually it's also around 2022, which is interesting. I must say that, that Tesla and Beyond Meat seem to, at late, as of late, follow suit. I think uh, the exact number for Tesla is 1681 and Beyond Meat is 1683, so quite close. And they've been both at 20 and 22 quite long. But if we have this number of PS ratio 5, that would be where Amazon is now, right? And Amazon's existed over 25 years and still have about 4 and 5. So that would give them a market cap about $50 billion. And Ethan Brown said that he does expect the company to be in a couple of years around 40 to 50 billion. So makes sense. Uh, so that would give you about 800 bucks, right? About an 8X. Uh, and that's not bad. That's not shabby at all. I, I think an 8X is really good too, but I do expect them to do way more than that. So if we take a uh, price of sales, that's not conservative, but I think it's very likely uh, would be then about a hundred billion dollars, which would give them a price at $1,587 per stock, about a 15 X. And that's impressive, obviously. And I see this as a very likely, uh, considering what they're doing, they're disrupting an industry, but we're going to talk more about that as we move on. So stay tuned. And then if we think about where they've been for quite a long time, and this is usually where st Tesla is also a bit higher at times. Also, again, market cap $200 billion and a stock price of 3,174. And that sounds pretty amazing. That would be a 30 X growth. I'm going to talk about why I do, do see this as possible, but we have to also remember before we move on that this is obviously just speculation. We don't know the exact numbers. What we'll see It's all about what's happening in the market in the years to come. And it's also related to the same outstanding shares. I do believe that it might be diluted with time. Not sure when that would happen, but I think it'll be, it'll take time considering that right now they have a cash balance of around $1.1 billion. So more than double the revenue uh, that they have so far. So I think they're good to go for quite some time. Folks, before I get to it, I would truly want to hear what you feel about the stock prices. Let me know down in the comments. Now, why do I see this as possible? Well, I'll tell you why. Because something we talked about often on this channel is that it's been all the rave about EVs as of late, right? The last year, the two years. And that's because the EV sector, like Tesla, NIO, and so forth, are actually disrupting a huge industry on the planet, right? They're disrupting the petroleum business, ice cars, so people will stop using gas and oil and start using electrical vehicles instead. And this will obviously have a huge impact on the planet when it comes to sustainability and environment. But according to the UN, even if that happens, that's not going to help us reach the goals we need to if we're able to save this planet. Uh, they've been stating since 2006 that if we don't stop the way we consume food right now with time, then we won't be able to actually sustain this planet or sustain ourselves on this planet anyways, because the planet will still be here when we're gone. But not only the UN, but other larger world organizations like the World Watch, to name another, they're stating the obvious, right? We need to change the way we eat. Now, why would this be such a huge paradigm shift? Well, considering that even though most people drive cars to some extent, they don't drive all the time though, right? Like maybe 10 to 20, 30 minutes per day, some one hour, but still when you eat, you eat three to five times a day. And we have to remember which is more important. Like one is an absolute necessity. We have to eat. Another could be a necessity to some extent, but not for most people, right? One you survive with, one you still can't survive without. So I think that's important to think about. And then we come into something else, which has to do with subsidies. Now, what is subsidies? Well, the typical thing is when it comes to the meat industry and the dairy industry, governments gives them subsidies, which means they give them extra money 
to create their products and sell their products, which means that when you go to a burger joint, let's say like McDonald's to Burger King, you order a burger, I don't know what it would cost, a cheap one in the States, like one, two, three bucks, just a burger. And when you eat that, you feel that's a pretty good price, but you're actually paying way less what it costs to produce uh, because taxpayers have to go in there and pay the balance basically which means that it doesn't matter if you eat meat or not if you're vegan flexitarian veg vegetarian you're still paying for that meat which makes no sense right considering that the planet is basically going under from a sustainability perspective because we ate we eat way too much meat and dairy so i do expect that that's going to change right because right now they're taxing fruits and vegetables. And that's why many, in many cases, it's very expensive to buy those, right? When that changes, I do expect that's going to be a political change in the next couple, coming years. It's already a lot of voices, even political voices, about what you have to do to save the planet. And this is one of the things they talk about. And when venture capitalists, you know, when big money... When the billionaires start noticing plant-based companies, knowing that it's going to be good for the environment, and start investing their kind of money, right? Other kinds of institutions. And it's not because it has to be a moral thing. It might be for some of them, but because they want to make more money, obviously. So when they start using that money, that's going to, of course, impact politicians as well, and they're going to follow suit. So I do think we're going to see that subsidies are going to be put on plant-based food instead. So it's going to be cheaper, which means meat and dairy is going to be way more expensive. And we'll see a huge change there. Now, a lot of plant-based companies, not only plant-based, but a lot of them, they focus on the Gen C and the millennial generations, right? And that's because we know that Gen Cs and millennials focus more on their health and think more about the sustainability because they're going to be here longer, right? But, uh, I would say Beyond Meat focuses on everyone, right? Because everyone wants a good burger, a, a good meat alternative. Uh, and especially because their whole focus is to produce a product that tastes exactly like meat and they're get, getting ever so closer. And when that happens, which is going to be around two to three years from now, when they get their first product that's going to actually be cheaper than meat, that means it's a game changer, right? Because price is a huge factor for everyone when it comes to food, right? That means that we won't see just specific generations buying their products. We'll see everyone who's a meat lover, whatever age, generation, culture, or whatever, they'll start buying their products, no doubt. Now, when Shamat Palahapatiya started talking about Tesla, Facebook, and Amazon several years ago, uh, that they would be much bigger than they were at that time, not only as a company, but as a stock price that they would fly to the moon, basically. People, other investors and great thinkers out there, they kind of laughed him out because they thought he was insane, basically. Now today, he's considered a young Warren Buffett, an investor genius. And why is that? Well, because he was absolutely correct. And same with Kathy Wood. Uh, for a couple of years now, she and ARK Invest have been predicting that Tesla will fly to the moon. And now soon they're going to fly to Mars, right? Not only with SpaceX, but basically the stock price. Because, yeah, it's been up to $900 Tesla, but it's down to 600 right now. It needs to take a breather like anything else. But she is predicting by 2025, we'll see the Tesla stock price around 3000 to maybe four thousand dollars and remember tesla six hundred dollars price right now is actually after the five-way split right it would actually be three thousand now so those prices are actually way higher than that originally because even though i know a lot of folks out there feel that maybe beyond meat has done its thing right this existed now as a stock company for two years and it's been trading sideways somewhat you know now it's down to 100 even but around 130 150 dollars uh, off and on and then when you compare it, though, with Tesla, that's existed way longer, over 10 years as a stock. Uh, I mean, back here was about, what, $3 or something like that. But it was for about five, six years here, 2013, around $25, $30. And it basically traded sideways for five, six years until the end of 2019. And then, boom. And then the 2020, and we know it went up to around $900 eventually. 
And why is that? Well, it's because, again, Tesla is disrupting a huge industry. So it's to be expected that they'll be able to trade higher, have a higher PS ratio. And it's the very same thing with Beyond Meat. But as I stated before, I believe it's a much more important industry that is getting disrupted because it has a much larger impact on the planet. And as we know, Jim Cramer from the street said uh, just about a year ago, that Beyond Meat is going to be as big as Facebook, as big as Amazon, as big as Google, if not more. And if you don't know his reasons, take a look at my video on him up here. But understand me correctly here. I'm not saying Beyond Meat is going to be this large by selling just five or six, seven products, right? I mean, they're moving into other aspects as we speak. And about nine to 10 years now, there will have a lot of other products out there. I mean, if we compare it with Tattoo Chef, that is a much smaller company, but still it's going to have a lot of potential. It's going to grow like crazy in my eyes. Love that company as well. But they have about 40 to 50 SKUs right now on products and about 54 is going to be finished, I think about August. Uh, and then you might ask yourself, well, Beyond Meat, which is a much larger company, a much more well-known product, why is it that they only have so few SKUs at this moment? It's because the only thing they've been doing basically for the last 10, 11, 12 years is perfecting their product, making their meat alternative as meaty as possible. Imagine what happens when they're finished with that. Obviously, we'll have the Beyond Bacon Facon. We'll have Beyond Ribs, Beyond fish products beyond yogurt beyond beyond milk cheeses whatever food thing you can think about in the refrigerator and the freezer or snacks we know already that they're going to make a huge deal now with pepsico which is going to be healthy snacks and beverages whatever that means which is probably dairy products right so we're talking about something whole different that's you have to understand the vision now after hearing all about this what do you guys think? Do you agree with me or you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comments. Do you think I'm insane? I'm good with that, but I want you to tell me. Let's talk about it. And since we've been talking about a lot of plant-based food here, if you are interested in trying out for a couple of weeks a plant-based whole foods diet and see what kind of energy and what, what happens with your health, take a look in the description with my affiliates. Well, that was it for today, folks. I truly hope you got a lot of value from today's video. And if you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you want to keep getting more information and analysis on Beyond Meat, The Tattoo Chef, The Very Good Food Company, and other plant-based companies out there, make sure to subscribe and don't forget that ever important bell button. And as I'm sure you know, this was not financial advice. These were just my own thoughts and opinions. It's important to do your own due diligence and invest safe. Have a great Saturday. Hope to see you soon and peace out.